Hi, my name is Anne, and I'm a librarian at the Maine Library, and I work on local history and helping people with genealogy resources, uh, genealogy searches. So I wanted to show you a great resource that we have access to from home now. Um, we are so lucky to have access to Ancestry while the library is closed. And I just wanted to show you how to do a basic search and how to evaluate some of the information that you can find on Ancestry. If you've already used Ancestry before, this is this is just going to be a review. If you haven't used Ancestry, I'm just going to take you through the steps of a basic search. So to get to Ancestry on our website, you need to go to the Explore tab and then scroll over to Research and Learn. Click on A for alphabetical um, databases and click on Ancestry. Now, normally right here, it will ask you to enter your library card number and uh, password, and you'll find the library card number on the back of your card underneath the barcode, enter all of the digits, and your um, PIN is always your eight digit birth date. So if you don't have a physical library card, that's no problem. You can go to the e-resources or e-content page on our um, website, and you can sign up for a digital library card right there and it will send you um, a library card number and you can use that so um, on this main page of ancestry i kind of want to show you sort of give you a tour of what is here um, here across the top are different um, different tabs that can help you with your search you can just do a basic search message boards is a great place to go to find information and get help from other ancestry users the Learning Center has tutorials, charts, and forms. This will give you, um, you can print out different family tree forms, family group sheets that'll help you keep you, help keep you organized as you do your research. And New Collections just highlights new documents that An Ancestry has recently uploaded. So uh, down here at the bottom, you have some quick links. If you know exactly what you're looking for, say you want to find a city directory from 1945, you can click there and you can search for just the city directory. Same with military uh, records, um, birth, marriage, and death, etc. Um, if you want to go to the census, you know that you're looking for census information. You can click on whatever decade you're looking for, and it will take you right to the search page for that census. One thing to remember when you're using the library version of Ancestry is that you don't have access to a personal family tree. Um, you just have access to the different records that are on Ancestry. So if you want to save, um, save whatever it is you find, you won't be able to save it to your tree, but I will show you how to do that when we, when we pull up some records. So I'm just going to go to search uh, for a basic search of all categories since we just want to cast a wide net and see what we can find. So I am going to search for a famous Kansas City Kansan, Ed Asner. And I'm going to keep my search very broad. The broader your search, say you just put in a name, um, the more results you'll get. If you drill it down and put in a lot of, like if you click here on show more options, you can put in all kinds of information that you might know already. But if you do that, it will really limit the um, the records that are retrieved. So I'm just going to keep it broad. Put Ed Asner, Wyandot, Wyandot County, Kansas, and click search. And it will bring up everything that it finds. So see, we've got yearbook photos. Um, looks like mostly yearbook stuff is coming up right away. Um, but over here, you can drill down on what, whatever kind of information you want to see. So let's take a look at census list because the census is really one of the best ways to find a lot of information about a person. So you can see we have the different different years that he appeared on the census, 1940, 1930, 1920. Um, let's see. Yep. So if you just hover over um, one of the results, it'll kind of bring up just a quick shot of what you'll find, uh, a snapshot of what you'll find on that page. So here we can see Eddie Asner, age 10 in, 19, in uh, 1920, so I don't, I, I'm thinking this is not the Eddie Asner we're looking for because it says Tennessee, and we know that in 1910 he was not born yet. So I'm not even going to bother to click on that one. 1930 census, this looks more like who we're looking for. Birth year 1930. Um, 
and you can kind of scroll down and see what else is on that record before you actually go in and click on it. So I'm going to just click on the 1940 census. And another thing you want to note about Ancestry is that sometimes the name spellings are not correct because either the census taker did not write the name down correctly, didn't spell it correctly, or the person who transcribed the record may have um, written it down. Maybe they couldn't read the census taker's handwriting. So here you can see it says Eddie Asdi. You might want to click on some names that are close to what you're looking for just in case they might be like a wrong transcription or a bad spelling. So let's go ahead, click on that 1940 census, and here we get right here is the full transcription of the record. So it's really easy to read. Um, all it, and this has all the information that that is on the original document, and then the names of other people in the household. This is really helpful when you're researching an entire family and uh, you know maybe multiple generations live in one house it'll give you the name of all of those people so i'm going to go ahead and click on the actual document because this is really cool it will blow up the document and you can look at exactly um, exactly how the original document looks and this tells you it's pulling from the national archives um, so here um, this screen will show you the original handwritten document and then over here you have the transcription too just in case you can't read anything this is really helpful to have um, up at the same time and if you don't want to look at that you can close it this button will put it back up um, so yeah you can see it's highlighted here it will always highlight the person you're looking for and uh, in yellow and the people other people in the household in green so that's super helpful uh, you can use these tools to pop out the whole document so you don't have anything else that you're looking at except the original handwritten document. Um, let's go back to the other view. Um, the, these buttons will allow you to scroll in so you can really look in closely. You can slide the document around so you can you know take a look at whatever detailed information you want to see. Like here you can see this is probably wh why they wrote ASD, because if you look at it, yeah, maybe it says ASNER, maybe it says ASD, but it's hard to tell. So, but we know that this is the person we're looking for. Um, so we have the parents and the siblings, Ed, right here. Um, it tells you their ages, where they were born. We see his parents were born in Russia. Um, scroll back out here. This is this is a handy tool. Um, if you click on this button, um, it will allow you to print or download. Um, you can move the document around. I don't think you want to look at it upside down, but just in case, look horizontally, whatever you need to do to be able to read that document better. So that is really han a handy tool button. Um, if you click the save button, it'll either send the image home or you can save it to your computer. If you do send image home, this is handy, really handy too. You can type in your email address and that will send you a link to your email. So you can always pull that record up again. That's really handy for the library version of Ancestry where you don't have the option of saving to your family tree. So that's pretty cool. And then these arrows are also helpful if you are maybe, you know, could be that the Asners had family members that lived on uh, the same street, like in a different house. So you can just click these buttons and it will take you to the next page. Um, so you can see who else lived on that street or right here, this film strip button at the bottom, you can click on that and that will give you just a thumbnail of all of those pages of the census. So you can kind of flip back and forth that way. So that is how you search for the census. Now let's go back to all of our results and look at a different kind of document. Um, oh yeah, we'll go back here and click on the All Categories button and that will bring back everything that came up for Ed Asner. So this is cool too. Let's look at some of the yearbook pictures. Um, see, we can see that he went to Wyandotte High School in 1947. Click on that and it will bring up that page of the yearbook that has his name on it. Um, so let's scroll. Oh, yeah. And it once again, it's highlighted exactly who you're looking for on the page, which is really handy. Okay, close out of that. Whoops. Let's see if we can go back and find a photo. So it looks like there's lots of yearbook photos for him. Um, let's see if we can find a good one. 
Let's click on this one. Senior scholarship. So here we go. It has his name highlighted down here. So you can scroll or zoom in and see. Where is he? And oh, I think that's him right there. So that's kind of cool that you can access yearbook information. And um, also be sure to go back to our website if you're looking for yearbook photos and on the yearbook project, which is also on the database tab, um, you can look up all the yearbooks that we have scanned so far from our collection. So we have Wyandotte, we have Rosedale, um, all the high schools in KCK. And let's see what else we can find here. Let's see if we can find a military record. So this may be a little bit harder. Joseph Asner. There may not be, eh, it doesn't look like he has any military records. Okay, let's go back to all categories. Filter by. Another really... Let's see, census and voter lists. Um, another good place to look for people is in the city directory. So let's go back and see if we can find that. Um, yeah, it's not showing me that, but that that's a great place to look um, for if you're trying to track maybe where somebody lived over the course of their life. Um, Oh, here we go. Directories. Okay. So we can see. Wait a minute. Oh. City directories. Okay. So we can see that in 1947, he was in Kansas City, Kansas. Then later, maybe he lived in Las Vegas. I think some of the more recent ones show him yep, um, in California. So that is a super helpful tool for looking for people too. And then you can always just go back and edit search. If you want to search for a new person, you can clear search. And there you go. You can start all over again. So that is how to do a basic search on Ancestry. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment um, on this video, or you can email me directly at alacey at kckpl.org. Good luck with your, uh, with your searching and um, have fun.